up everyone welcome back to my channel if you're new here i'm paris and i make videos all about candle making and the starting and managing of my small candle business lady simone candle co any owners and entrepreneurs out there you probably will agree with me when i say starting your own business is one of the most challenging things you can ever do in your life i'm pretty sure <laughs> but it's also one of the most rewarding and fulfilling ventures you can ever take in your life and ever accomplish. But before any aspiring business owners out there watching me get a little discouraged, I want to take the time today to kind of talk about some basic business concepts you should know prior to starting your business. It's absolutely possible. You just gotta do it. Just, just dive in and do it. But I do want to kind of guide you and give you a little foundational uh, discussion on things I think you should know before diving into that ownership life. So let's just get started. Let's talk about developing a powerful message. What message or what problem are you solving for your customers that would make them be willing to pay for your product, for your candles, for your wax melts? You have to think about the message that you want to convey to your customers that will make them want to buy, that will make them attracted to you, your product, your brand, your mission, the whole thing. That is one of the things I urge um, aspiring candle business owners or just business owners in general. It's such a saturated market. There's so many business owners out here. You have to figure out what will entice customers to want to come to you. So for example, Lady Simone Candle Co. Um, I am all about empowerment, uplifting each other, but more specifically, um, my brand is geared towards women battling postpartum anxiety. And so my candles are... Um, designed to be empowering aromas. These aromas are near and dear to my heart. I've tested lots of candle scents and there were certain scents that specifically stuck out to me and I have correlated it with an affirmation and an aspiring um, and uplifting or an empowering uh, scent. And so that is the brand message that I give to my customers. So think about what message you want to convey to your customers. Next, focus on your customer and fully understand the market. So again, I've talked about this in a couple videos back about how candles, the candle industry can be a very saturated market at time. Well, it is. <laughs> and so what you want to do is not only in figuring out how to stand out, but what are you going to do in your marketing and advertising strategy to then hone in on that specific market that's that uh, specific target audience, I'm sorry. And so think about all the brands and products that you've encountered like ever. Like even if you don't buy their product or interact with them on some level, obviously they're successful because they're talking to somebody. Customers are buying something from them. There's something in their marketing and advertising strategy that has honed in on that specific target market. So even if you didn't buy a product, Obviously, the you, you know, you don't fit their target market, but there's customers out there that do and it has caused them to be successful. I always say there's riches in the niches. So what I want to encourage you to do is kind of research your competitors, see what they're doing, what marketing strategies and advertising concepts are they using? What is attracting their customers to them? Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's not. I don't want you to look at it like it's stalking, but you do kind of want to reach out to similar brands, reach out to similar business owners and other candle makers and just start a conversation, network and figure out what's working for them and then try to implement it in your marketing and advertising strategy, but definitely make it your own. It's not copying, don't imitate or copy or anything like that. Definitely make it your own. Now let's talk about starting small and then growing. A lot of aspiring candle business owners, at least some that I have talked to, uh, some of my subscribers and followers, and even some of my students, 
they just want to hit the ground running and offer like every cent on the planet. And I try to like bring them back into focus and say, no, don't do that. <laughs> Start small. Give yourself time to release new scents and release new products later. You want to keep your customers hungry for more. You don't want to give it all to them in, in one big bite. But what you do give to them, let that be your best grab them and now let's keep them loyal and coming back by offering more enticing and amazing aromas right and so start small start with the small product line um, whether it's fragrance oils that you purchase from a supplier or you purchase those and you make your own unique blend start small and then grow so even if that means releasing your brand and your product line in bite-sized pieces that's okay so maybe start off with four to six cents, right? Even even four, and that may not seem like a lot, but um, it gives your customers, you know, a chance to, okay, I'll take a little bite of that. I wonder what she's gonna release later. And that gives you room to maybe release a summer collection, a fall collection, a winter collection, a spring collection, whatever. It gives you room to kind of scale and grow your product line to get more customers coming back. Now understand fully your skills, the time you will have for your business, and your strengths. I say that because as a new business owner, as a startup, and probably even seasoned business owners still wear a lot of hats. You are the web designer, you are the accountant, you are the bookkeeper, you are the pack, the order packer, you actually make the candles and the products, right? You are the marketer in the advertise, advertisement department. You, you're all of it. You're the social media manager. You're all of it. You're the inventory manager. You're, you're the one that's bringing in the supplies and, and, and making the product. You're all of it. And so as a new business owner, one of the basic business concepts I want to emphasize here in this video is assess your lifestyle. Figure out what time you can allot to your business. So even if that means sacrificing sleep, Every night, you know, there may be a week where you just say, you know what, this week I'm going to get up at 4 a.m. every day and hit the ground running and do something on my business, whether that's finishing your website, finishing your product descriptions, whether that's batching out content for social media, any of that, it may require either sacrifice and sleep or maybe a few weekends you just grind it out and say, you know what, this month on, you know, every Sunday, you know, Saturday will be my rest days, but on Sunday, that's when I'm going to start prepping and batching out for the week. And so understand the time you have available, understand your strengths and your talents. So if it comes to accounting and bookkeeping, see if there's somebody in your family. If you're not strong with numbers, nothing to be ashamed about. You want your books to be right. So maybe seek out a family member that may be better in budgeting or crunching numbers and as a startup it's easy to work your numbers and get your organization and management down now so that way as you grow it will be easy to implement when those numbers start to grow and so seek outsourced help you know if it's in your budget or like i said tap on a friend or a family member really really understand what you're good at and what you may need to slide off your lap so that way you're not so overwhelmed and and focusing so much in one area because there's so many other areas that you have to focus on another business concept surround yourself with like-minded people mentors coaches uh, i have a business coach i this is actually i have two business coaches um, i had a digital product business coach you know, and I wanted to launch the digital side of my business. And now I have a business expansion coach. Um, I've invested in their skills and talents to teach me how to grow and scale my business. And so surround yourself with like-minded people. Since launching my business, I have become, actually gained a lot of great friends in the business industry. And none of us have the same business, which is hilarious. <laughs> At one point, I was using their services, and next thing you know, we're talking all the time. And so surround yourself with mentors and coaches, um, you know, and that's why I'm starting to build up the digital side of my business. Because if anybody needs help, I want to be able to supply those services and, and offer them that guidance and help them um, from what I've learned and experienced. Um, starting a business is hard, and it can oftentimes be lonely, especially when there's no one around you that's in that similar industry. 
or who let alone have started a business. So, you know, rub up against some people that will keep you, uh, keep you pushing and keep you encouraged. Another concept, write a business plan. Yes, business plans still exist. <laughs> if you did not know, <laughs> it's essential. Uh, I will say a lot of my students were shocked when they entered that module of my course because they're like, we're writing business plans? Absolutely we are. Whether nobody sees that business plan ever, you need to know how you want to start building your business. You need to lay the foundation. You need to understand what you want to do. Where's your vision? Everything that's going on up here that you either um, are confused about or you just don't know where to go, we're about to narrow that down and crunch it and put it on paper. So that way you can begin to kind of streamline your thoughts kind of get a vision, a narrowed vision on where you see your business start. How do you see your business starting? And that, and then, you know, get a proposed launch date. So that way you can hold yourself accountable, light some fire under you and start working towards your goals. So literally starting a business plan that actually should have been the first topic I said, but starting a business plan should be one of the first things you think about as a business owner. Another basic business concept that I want to urge and encourage, know your numbers. So if you're already in business or you're a startup, this is a great business concept that I want to in kind of put in your ear a little more. Know your numbers. As a startup, your expenses are flying out the door more so than they're coming in. <laughs> it's just the name of the game, especially with candles because you're constantly trying to keep your items stocked and it can be hard. Um, and so when it comes to startup costs and budgeting and things that you need to, you know, purchase and invest in, knowing your numbers and knowing, you, you know, how many sales you're bringing in this month, understanding your bottom line and what that looks like, it will not only help you as a business owner, right, help you grow in that area, but it will also help you in terms of marketing, advertising, and scaling. So that way you can see where you need to start focusing your dollars now that you're in business and you're operating. Because when you're starting up, you're trying to get everything together. But once you start operating, now it's a matter of turning over that inventory, keeping your items restocked, you know. So now you can begin to focus those dollars in other business areas. And so knowing your numbers is crucial for that. Another business concept that I want to bring out, and I don't know, this may be a touchy one, but you know on this channel, I keep it real, and I'm just going to say it. Understand, as a business owner, there are no entitlements. And I say that because, and I don't know if you've ever heard that advice, but I'm saying that because as a business owner, it's one of the hardest jobs you'll ever do. And don't take it lightly that you're in this role, you put yourself in this role, as a business owner, as a CEO, as a founder, and all of those titles can sometimes fluff you, you know, can, you know, make you feel, feel yourself a little bit. I mean, you know, you think about it like, I'm a CEO, I own my own business, but it's one of the hardest jobs you'll ever do. Ask any business owner, you know, when they first started their business, when, when did they ever take a vacation? When did they ever really take time off? You are constantly in grind mode because, as a startup, you're trying to get your name out there and it takes a while. <laughs> so you're doing pop-up shops and farmer's markets and you know making sure your business cards is in every single order. You're constantly marketing and advertising yourself and putting in your plug because you're trying to grow your target audience. You're trying to you know build and grow and get some more customers. So it's one of the hardest jobs you'll ever do. So understand that there's no entitlement here as being a CEO or, you know, as my shirts say, a black CEO. I am a black CEO and I love every minute of it, but I also understand how hard it is when this camera is turned off and I'm in my element trying to not only operate the day to day, but I'm also thinking about next quarter. I'm already thinking about my fall collection and it's May. I'm already thinking about the packaging for that and ideas and scents for that. So understand it's a lot of work but it's rewarding and fulfilling. So you could definitely give yourself some kudos, but understand that you have to work hard to be successful. Next, have a passion for what you're doing. This is another big tip that um, when I'm talking to new candle makers or aspiring candle business owners, I always tell them, have a passion for what you're doing. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna say it again. 
have a passion for what you're doing. I say that because once you start your business and you, you know, in the startup process or you're in the operating process, the day to day, even the quarter to quarter, the month to month can oftentimes get so overwhelming that you can almost lose the passion for why you even started in the first place. And that I, that is one of the things that will crush my heart. I've talked to many of you and I had to kind of bring you back up and say, no, don't lose the passion for why you started. Don't lose your why. I know the business is stressful, but if you keep that passion, if you keep that fire burning, even if that means, you know what, this week, I'm not even going to focus on the business. I'm just going to make some candles. Just do it. If that's what's going to help you get get your fire and your plug back. Because running a business is exhausting. And then when it comes time to restock in your inventory, you don't even want to. It's just like, I'm tired. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm kind of over this this week. I'm over this this month. It can get discouraging. I will say, as a business owner, your emotions are <laughs> like this. I'm just going to be real. So have a passion for the craft, please. So that way, when you get in the hustle and bustle of running your business, making those candles will never die. And lastly, don't go at it alone. Tap into other expertise. So you're doing all this research. You're, you feel like you're all over the place. Don't go at this alone. Don't, if you feel like you need help, if you feel like you want somebody to hold your hand and get you back on the straight and narrow and at least help you narrow down and streamline your thoughts, don't go at it alone. Tap into some expertise. There's so much in this digital space, there's no reason why you should not be able to get the expertise and the help you need. I hired a digital product coach um, and she helped me with, you know, to get the content and the digital side of my business of Lady Simone Candle Coat up and running. That's where the course came from. That's where all these freebies are starting to come from. She helped guide me in this digital space. All I knew was just, I just want to make candles. But I also realized and started my channel how um, how I can be of help and help uh, others and, and service others. So she helped me with that. Now I have a business expansion coach because now I want to grow and scale and kind of begin to build out my di different branches of business. And so I'm tapping into the expertise of others who have either been there, done that, or this is what they are absolute experts in. So why sit up here and bang my head against the wall or on my laptop when I can just tap into other people? And this is not discrediting your skills. This doesn't mean you can't do it alone. Absolutely. There's a lot of business owners that have done it from the ground up completely by yourself. I'm just saying if it gets to a point in an area of your business where you feel like you need a little bit of guidance and expertise, please do not feel ashamed to tap into others who have or who is on that same journey that you are. I'm telling you the secret, one of the, one of the secrets to success, a lot of business owners will tell you they have tapped into other networks and other professionals, either in this, in their industry or someone who have owned their business, who are seasoned in ownership. They have tapped into their knowledge and have implemented it into their business their way and are seeing success now. So don't take advantage of this digital space and the expertise that is out there. There you have it. I hope you have enjoyed this video and have gained a little bit more business insight on some of the basic business concepts that you should be thinking about if you're thinking about starting a business this year. Please don't forget to follow me on social media, Instagram and Facebook at Lazy's Digital HQ. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, bye.